There have been quite a few advancements in the world of backpacking over the past 10 years or so, and one of my favorites is the navigation app called Far Out, formerly known as Guthook. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to use the app for navigation, how to use it to get up-to-date information about stuff on the trail. I'm gonna share how I use it, both while I'm on the trail and as part of my trip planning process. I'm not gonna go through every single thing the app can do because otherwise this video would be way too long. However, if there is any demand for that, I can make a follow-up video at some point in the future. All right, so let's go ahead and get started and jump right into it. Just a little background information. The Far Out app is available for both iOS and Android and is free to download. However, when you do purchase a map, it does cost a little bit. Some of the shorter maps, um, you know, 30 miles or under, are, those can be $5 or even cheaper. Mid-sized trails like the Benhody Trail or the John Muir Trail or maybe the Long Trail, Colorado Trail, those things are somewhere in maybe the 10 to 20-ish dollar range. And then longer trails like the Pacific Crest Trail, Continental Divide Trail, Appalachian Trail, those can be a little bit more expensive. I think the PCT is like 35 bucks. The most expensive one is the Appalachian Trail at about $60. That might seem like a lot of money. However, in my opinion, it's worth every penny. And with any luck, I'll prove that to you by the end of this video. Also, I've noticed over the last couple of years, there have been quite a few international trails that have been showing up as well. So it's not just about backpacking in the, in the United States. You can use this app for backpacking around the world. One thing I like about the app is that it works in both online and offline mode. Offline mode meaning that you do not need to have a cellular signal in order to use the app. It is powered by the GPS on your phone, so as long as you have a clear view of the sky, you should be able to use the app. You do need to buy and download your map ahead of time, so I'm gonna walk through how that works right now. And just a special note, I will be using the iOS version of the app, although I believe the Android version works pretty similarly. So the first thing you do is go into the app and select the store icon on the bottom left-hand side. At this section, you can look at all the trails that are available and you simply scroll down to find the trail that you wanna purchase. You click on it and purchase it. So for demonstrative purposes, let's assume I want to buy the Arizona Trail. It takes me to that page and I have already purchased it. So I simply click the button and then it starts loading the trail and here we are. Now that you know how to buy a map, and install it, I'm gonna talk about navigation. And if you haven't backpacked a lot, you might wonder, well, why do we need navigation when you're on the trail? You're just walking on a trail. Isn't it easy to just stay on it? Well, the answer is no. I have been lost on the trail more than I like to admit, and that can happen for a variety of reasons. Not all trails are marked very well. Sometimes there are intersecting trails all over the place and you're not sure which one to take. Sometimes you're hiking on snow and you can't even see where the trail is. You might be hiking at night. Also, I've been hiking on a trail that's not very well used and you can't even really see where it is. Like for example, the Ice Age Trail in the northern part of the state, there are yellow blazes, but without those blazes, sometimes you can't even tell where the trail is because hardly anybody walks on it. Those are all really important reasons why having the navigation app to use the GPS to show you exactly where you are on the trail can be very, very helpful. And if you're using the app, when you do get lost, which happens to everybody from time to time, using Far Out can help you identify very quickly that you are off the trail so it can avoid walking a long ways in the wrong direction. Also, just as important is sometimes you think you're lost because you haven't seen a blaze in a long time, but you're really not. And you can use the app and look at the navigation part of it and see, oh yeah, I still am on the trail, and it can give you some peace of mind when that happens. In order to use the navigation feature, simply click on Guide at the bottom middle of the page. You may need to click on the little map icon on the toolbar on the right side of the page to see the map. The color line is the trail. I'm looking at the Ice Age Trail in Wisconsin for this example, and the trail is blue with the green part being road walks. Most of the other maps I've seen, the trail is red, with side trails or spur trails being marked in blue. Click the GPS button and the app will find your location and put you on the map shown by the small white circle with the arrow. It may take a few seconds for it to lock in with your exact position, but GPS is very accurate. So if you are on the trail, the icon will show you right on the line. If it turns out that you are not on trail or lost, you'll see your icon off the trail. My plan for this part of the video was to go out to the Ice Age Trail, which is not too far from my house and show you how to use the app to get back to the trail if you are lost. Watch as you see how I accidentally did this without even trying. One thing I wanted to show you guys was what happens when you're off of the trail. And I came out to the Ice Age Trail today to do a little demo. And as luck would have it, I actually did walk off the trail and didn't realize it. 
And uh, so let me show you what this kind of looks like here. I'm just going to pull up the um, app on my phone. And as you can see, I am off the trail a little bit. I'm by that P. My little, my little guy on there is not on the trail. So really all you got to do is just start walking. And so I start walking and I can see the way the arrow is pointed. And I can tell that I'm getting a little bit closer and a little bit closer to the trail. I might have to fast forward a little bit here. Yep. And in my defense, this does look like trail, but it's actually a snowmobile trail. The actual trail heads this way. Next, I'd like to talk about some of the waypoints that you saw in the last section when I was walking through navigation. Waypoints are just various points of interest that you'll see on the map that can be all kinds of different things. It could be a road crossing, a town stop, a restaurant, a water crossing, a water source, just all kinds of different things show up as waypoints on your map. Here's a screenshot from the Far Out app that shows the various waypoint icons you might see along the trail. As you can see, there are quite a few. And as a side note, you can filter out the ones you don't wanna see in the settings. You can click on any of the waypoints on the map and it's gonna bring up detailed information on that waypoint. Many of them also have photos. When your GPS is on and you are on the trail, the app's gonna tell you how far you are from that specific waypoint in trail miles. This is great for figuring out how far you have to go to get to the next shelter, the next water source, or anything else for that matter. It's also great for figuring out how far you've walked in a given day. Simply click on the spot where you started that morning and the app shows you how many miles back it is. The next feature that I like a lot is the ability to see the elevation profile of the trail. So let's take a look at how this works. We are back to the Arizona trail map for this example. To view elevation info, click on the mountain icon on the right hand toolbar and that will bring up an elevation profile. You can zoom in or out to change the scale. And if you wanna understand the elevation profile for a specific section, you can zoom the map to fill the screen with the exact section that you wanna measure, typically the bottom and top of a climb. And then you can review the data shown on the screen, such as total ascent and descent, the length of section you're looking at, and the overall grade. It can be a bit finicky to get that just right, so another option is to look at the elevation lines and visually estimate it, and that's what I normally do. Elevation change is only part of the story when you're looking at a section of trail. The terrain itself is also pretty relevant. I like to look at the photos and the waypoints along the way to see what I'm in for. I can tell from the photos that this part of the Arizona Trail looks like pretty decent walkable trail and not a snarly mess of rocks and roots. I find that reviewing the elevation profile really influences what I do on the trail throughout the day. For example, it might influence how many miles I hike. If there's a two or 3,000 foot climb, I'm certainly not gonna hike as many miles as I would if it was perfectly flat, for example. Also, it's gonna influence my water carries. If I have a huge climb and it's warm weather, I might wanna carry a lot more water than if it's say 45 or 50 degrees and perfectly flat. So this information can really help influence what I'm doing on the trail during the day. Up until now, you might be thinking, oh yeah, this file app is really cool, but do I really need it? Well, where it really, really shines is with the real-time crowdsourced updates. And by crowdsourced, I mean all of us backpackers out on the trail are entering information into the app to help other hikers and provide information to people while they're on the trail. When you're using the app, you can click on any of the waypoints or icons that you see on there. And when you do, it'll bring it up along with any photos if anybody's put those out there. But most importantly, it's got comments. And those comments are what make it so helpful when you're out on the trail. One important thing to note is that these comments only update when you have cellular service. So for example, if it's been three days since you had a cell signal, any comments that have been entered within the past three days will not be on your app. So if you do have a signal, you will get real-time updates. Comments on water sources can be invaluable, especially on dry sections of trail. Let's take a look at the comments for Bathtub Spring, one of the first water sources for northbound hikers on the Arizona Trail. The description says, reliable in spring and likely flowing most of the year. And then if you look at the most recent comment, that indicates the water is flowing and good. Next comment indicates a local says he's never seen it not flowing. Well, that's good news. After taking a look at the next few comments, it looks to me like this is a decent water source. There are also a couple of photos and those will help you know you're in the right spot. 
and I guess we know why they call it bathtub spring now. In addition to water updates, it's also fantastic for other types of trail hazards that you might encounter. So if there's something going on on the trail that hikers might need to know about, somebody is generally gonna put a comment out there, especially on more well-used trails, and that'll help you understand what you need to watch out for. A great example is beehives. Once in a while, there's a nasty beehive right on trail and somebody might put, hey, at mile 112.5, there's a beehive right on trail, look out. And you can be on the lookout for that kind of thing and make sure you don't take a break there or set down your pack when you get to that section. Other hazards would include stuff like poison ivy or poison oak or maybe downed trees. People put water crossing information on there. For example, there might be a dangerous water crossing, but 100 yards upstream, it's more shallow and a lot more safe. That's the kind of information that can help save lives and keep people safe when they're out on the trail. And I love it when people put that kind of stuff in the app. Other information that I find really valuable is when people put information about maybe there's animal activity that you might need to know about. I've seen it where there was a rattlesnake that was under a shelter and somebody had put information about that. Well, that's good to know. Also, sometimes there's bear activity in your camping area. Having that information at your fingertips can be super valuable so you know, hey, I'm not even gonna stay at this spot, I'm gonna keep moving because there's been a bear that's been bugging people. One spot that ends up seeing quite a few comments that's very helpful is along road crossings near town stops. So you can find out how easy is it to get a shuttle, how easy is it to get a hitch, is, if there's a shuttle driver in the area, people will sometimes post their contact information and I always find that to be really valuable. Other information that you can find on there in the town areas are, are there any hiker friendly restaurants? Are there any hotels that give hiker discounts? Where's the best place to do laundry? What are the hours of the post office? What gas stations or grocery stores have good resupplies? Where are the best prices? Those are all very helpful things that people are putting in the comments on these waypoints that can help you, the backpacker, when you're out on the trail. None of this information gets out there, however, without us, the backpacking community, putting comments on these waypoints as we pass them up. So throughout your day, if you come across information that would be really helpful for other backpackers to know, I say go ahead, bring up the app, put a comment out there, and other hikers will thank you for it big time. I'm sure you could see as I was demonstrating parts of the app that I had some photos downloaded at some of the waypoints and I had a nice topographical map sitting behind the trail in the app itself. In order to do that, I had to go into the settings and download some of that stuff. So I'm gonna walk you through how to do that right now. On the bottom right toolbar, click more, then settings, then manage downloads. Unless you have an old phone with very little storage, I suggest downloading waypoint photos and at least one offline map option. Photos are great to help you see what's ahead, and the offline map is essential in my opinion. I use opentopomap.org, you'll see that option on the screen here, and I like to see the topography, so that's why I selected that one, but you can pick whichever map you like. Next, I'm gonna show you how I use the map for trip planning. There's a couple of ways that I like to use it when I'm planning an upcoming trip, and I'm gonna use the Arizona Trail as an example because that is a trail I really would like to hike in the next year or two. The first thing I did was purchase and download the Arizona Trail map on the app. Once I got that done, I decided I was gonna use that to figure out my resupply plan. How I did this was I just went through, starting at the beginning of the trail, and I scrolled through, and I found everywhere where there was a town stop that looked fairly close to the trail. And then, by using the comments that were there, I figured out which town stops had good resupply options, which places I could get a shower, or go to a restaurant, or even stay in a, in a hotel or motel. I was able to figure that all the way up the entire trail. By doing that, I was able to create my resupply plan end to end on the trail. I found it to be really valuable. The next way that I used the app as part of my trip planning process was in trail prep. So as you know, the Arizona Trail, one of the biggest issues there is water. So I walked through the first 200 or so miles of the trail and I checked every water stop or every water waypoint just to kind of see what was happening. And I wanted to get a feel for how often was there gonna be water, how decent was the water, was it running the time of year that I'm gonna go there or generally not. And I wanted to just get a, a feel or general understanding for what I was in for. And what I came up with was, yep, water is gonna be somewhat of an issue on the Arizona Trail. However, I didn't find any 50 or 60 mile water carry type things. I was just finding some that were in the 20 to 25 mile range occasionally, which that's stuff I've done before, so I felt pretty comfortable with it. It also helped me plan out how much water capacity that I would need to have on the trail, and it got me mentally prepared to deal with the fact that not all of the water I would be drinking 
would be from springs or streams. Some of it's from the, some of those cow ponds and that's a little bit gross, but at least now I know what I'm in for. Another thing I looked at was the elevation profile for the first couple hundred miles of trail, just to give myself an idea of what I would be in for. And in looking at that, I found that, yep, the start of the trails, couple thousand feet up, couple thousand feet down, but overall, not, not too bad, nothing I haven't seen before. So that gives me a lot of confidence going into that hike. I also use the app for planning while I'm on the trail. And this is just part of my nightly routine. I climb to my tent, get in my quilt, I pull up my phone, I pull up the Far Out app, and I start looking at what does the next day look like. So what I'll do is look at the elevation profile and I'll try to get an idea of how far do I wanna hike based on the elevation profile. So let's say I wanna hike 20 miles. Then I'll scroll ahead about 20 miles and I'll start looking for likely places to camp. And that gives me a good plan for the next day. All right, I'm gonna do 19.8 miles because I found a great campsite at that distance and it should work out given the conditions in which I'm gonna be hiking. Another thing I look at are those water waypoints and I create my water gathering plan for the next day. So if there are streams everywhere, I really won't worry about it, but if there's only say one or two water waypoints along the way, and then I'll need to know, is there water there? Is there not water there? One thing I'll say though, is be careful with how much you trust the comments in those water waypoints. I remember last year on the PCT, we ran across a water waypoint that said there were 50 gallons of water in the morning that we were hiking. We got there in the afternoon and there wasn't any left. So you can't rely on those 100%, especially water caches, because the information isn't always perfect. I also look out for any side trips I wanna take along the way. So for example, there might be a really awesome waterfall, like a half mile off trail or something, or maybe there's a lookout point I wanna to go to or a fire tower I wanna to climb. That's all part of the next day planning process that I do the night before when I'm using the app. And one more way that I use the app when I'm on trail is to understand my average pace. So for example, if I left at 7 a.m. in the morning and it was 11 o'clock, I'll pull up the app, I'll click the GPS button, and then I'll scroll back and find out the place I camped and see how many miles it was. So if it said I had gone eight miles, well, simple math will tell me I've gone two miles an hour. I like to know my average pace because that tells me if I'm on track to make it to that campsite that I had planned on getting to by the end of the day. And my pace varies a lot based on conditions, anywhere from three and a half miles an hour on super easy trail to under one mile an hour when things get super steep or wet, slippery, and difficult. And if I am not on pace to get to that campsite, I may need to adjust my plans. So it's very easy to figure out your average pace using the app. You just look at the waypoint you're at and you go back to where you camped the night before and there you have it. Two quick tips I'll give you while you're using the app. One is to turn off the GPS feature while you're not using it because GPS is a big phone battery drainer and you don't wanna leave that thing on while it's in your pocket because it could drain your battery really quickly. In fact, I actually shut the app completely off when I'm not using it just to be safe. The second tip is even though the app is amazing and it gives you all kinds of information, it does run on your phone, don't trust your phone. I suggest carrying a compass and if possible, a paper map backup. Phones die for any number of reasons. You can fall in the water and get it wet. It can break, you can lose it, the battery can go, whatever. There's all kinds of different reasons that your phone might not be available. So I wouldn't rely on that 100% while you're on trail. Have some kind of a backup navigation like a compass. As I've shown you, I think the Far Out app is one of the best advancements in backpacking that has come out in the last 10 years or so. I use it all the time. I find it so valuable for navigation on the trail learning about all the different waypoints and what to expect when I'm out there. And I also use it extensively for trip planning. If you're already using the app, then you know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't used it, then hopefully by this time in the video, I've convinced you that you ought to give it a shot. As always, if you found any value in this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks, and we'll see you out on the trail.